All right, I'm here at AWS reInvent and it's day two. I'm uh, here with one and only Ed NF, uh, the Chief Product Officer at Datastax. Yeah, nice to meet you. Very nice In to person. meet you. We've, we've spoken before on Zoom. Yes, like exactly. Everyone, many times, but yes. It's so nice to finally meet you, Ed, and uh, you know, it's such a huge crowd coming in here. I heard yesterday when I was, day before yesterday when I landed, the cab driver tells me it's like around 65,000 people visiting AWS. It doesn't surprise me, it doesn't surprise me. Every year, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, just for your audience, I know people definitely know you and they've seen you at so many uh, talks and you've, you've been a industry expert, a good data leader out there. So can you tell us a little more about yourself? Well, sure, so I've, uh, I've been at Datastax for the last four years now. Yep. And obviously we're the Cassandra company. My journey with Cassandra, started many years ago, actually about 12 years ago in the open source Cassandra community, and actually built a startup that was built on top of Cassandra that became part of Apogee, the API management company, yep. which is also built on top of Cassandra. Yep. So a few years back when uh, when Chet Kapoor uh, became the, the CEO of Datastax and got really excited about saying, let's, you know, let's go and and take this company to the next level. Uh, for me, it's always been a technology that's been really near and dear to my heart, and it's been very love exciting. It. Yeah, no, I love it, and uh, it's obviously we've all closely watched your journey. Like I said, I was talking to Maruti as well. Yeah, yeah from back from APG days, he was telling me so much about all the journey that you and Chet have had. So it's amazing to see how uh, you know. Datastax has grown uh, for good and for for the for the open source community as well. Amazing. It's, it's been yeah. a journey, right? Yeah, with uh, Cassandra 5.0 coming out yeah. uh, very soon. Um, wow. We will be, uh, uh, I think they'll be making announcements later this month in the open source community, so something to look forward to. Awesome, I can't wait, and uh, definitely looking for 2024, it's going to be a bigger year. Okay. I'm, I, I'm definitely going to ask you more about what are your predictions towards the end of the show, but uh, uh, just as we are here at AWS reInvent, what are you most excited about it? Well, you know, I think it's it's really exciting to see how everything, how, how generative AI is changing everything. Right. And so, I think like most of the people here, I'm looking forward to seeing you know all the announcements they've made so far and everything around foundational models and bedrock and yeah. all the partnerships. Uh, it's really an exciting time for people that are building, uh, building on top of AI. So that that's what has me most excited. That's awesome. I think uh, another big thing that I've been hearing a lot around is you know vector and. Uh, you know, rag. Uh, I would love to know more about it. I also saw this signage that says "Vector Made Easy," yes. which looks pretty cool. Yes. So, we'd love to uh, for our audience. We would love to know how does it, uh, how does Data Stacks makes it easier for us? Yeah. Well, sure. So, you know, Vector has become the most important thing in databases True. this year. True. True. Uh, it it is more than just a data type. The way that it's used in building AI applications, and that's why you see everybody talk about rag. Yeah. Um, but a lot of things start to go wrong when you, like the idea of, of building a RAG application, which is, I've got a model, it needs data, I need to retrieve that data very yep. quickly, I need to search for it semantically. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty cool. But the minute you start adding more data to the mix, mm -hmm. a lot of things go wrong. Uh, your, your relevancy, the quality of your results, all of these things start to become a problem. Yep. And one of the things that Cassandra does really, really well is handle very large amounts of data. Right. And we've taken Cassandra down to its core internals and made it so that vectors are a native data type, which means that yep. you now have the ability to put any amount of content yep. into Cassandra, turn it into vectors, and tie it into your large language model. So that is the starting point in terms of making it easy because even though everything looks easy at the surface, it just stops working. And True. I've heard this from a yeah. lot of folks who start going and building these you know, examples and demo apps and then they're like, wait a minute, the results I'm getting are terrible. Yeah, and do you see it uh, moving across the enterprise uh, world as well? Like oh, a lot of enterprise companies are kind of wanting to learn more about it and adapt it in various ways. I, I think the last time that I saw enterprises adopting technology, new technology, this quickly, yep. was probably mobile apps. Yep. And this is actually more than mobile. Like when I, when mobile was a big deal, um, 
we hear people going saying, oh, we're going to do mobile next year. We're going to, you know, it's important to us, but they're paying lip service to it. Like with AI, every every Fortune 500, every Global 2000 company I talk yep. to, they have multiple generative AI projects underway. So, no, this is definitely enterprise ready. Okay, can't wait. And I know, uh, you know, uh, DataStax is a huge partner with AWS, uh, and there are a lot of joint solutions. Would you like to tell our audience a little about that as well? So, a lot of the things that, that you know, um, come into play on that are just the fact that if you're using AWS and yep. you're using Astra, you want it to behave like one cloud. So everything from nice. how we integrate at the marketplace to within our developer portal where you come in and you're importing data yep. and you're automatically able to go and have things like Bedrock serving the models to turn your data into vectors, being able to easily integrate it, being able to go and have, uh, whether you're doing message-oriented connections, whether you're yep. using, uh, you know, cases, whatever you're using, we have the deep integrations in place. So, yep. so that stuff has been really exciting. Now, we're also seeing things like private link that are really important for people to be able to get securely at their data yep. and bring them into these AI applications being things that both the, that the customers are asking for. And so there's, a, you know, being able to go and complete the stack and being able to give people, um, a, a, you know, end-to-end -end technology platform that they can build yep. on is really a key thing. Okay, this is pretty interesting and uh, thanks for sharing those insights. I had a, uh, uh, I know we are uh, here for the next two days, and uh, what's what, what are the key takeaways that you feel that uh, the audience could take from data stacks if they are around? Well, so first thing I would say is if you're not already playing with this technology, if you're not already prototyping uh, with it, you really need to start. Yeah. Uh, every company I talk to is doing this stuff. Uh, you know, but I do keep on running into folks who are going and saying, oh, I don't see the use case, I do, don't see all that. I, I'd say, jump in there, make sure you're paying attention to this stuff. It's moving very, very quickly, and I don't think it's gonna slow down anytime soon. I love it. And uh, one last question for our audience. Like I said, 2024, around, uh, 2024 is just around the corner, yeah. so um, any, any, even one prediction that you would like to share with our audience? Uh, I wish I could predict the future. So here's what I, I the, the predictions I'll make will be, um, first of all, as I mentioned, Cassandra 5.0. Yes. Dotto is going to come out. It's yes. going to be awesome. Yeah. It has vector uh, built in. It's got transactions uh, for the first time for Cassandra. So yep. you can use it you know, for any use case. Right. A um, bunch of great stuff on that. But other than that, I suspect that 2024 will be even more AI-centric than uh, 2023 was. All right, so it's not going to be any more buzzword, but things are getting real, and we're yes. going to see real results coming up there, I, right? I, I think so. <laughs> awesome. This was great, Ed. Uh, Ed I think uh, I'm definitely looking forward to see what more you kind of coming up with, and uh, thanks for visiting the Robert Show. Uh, great, great seeing you. I'll see you online next time. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you very much, Ed. All right.